heard the noise. Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> That's it, Chris? That's it? <laughs> okay. No men? No what? No men? No. Good enough men here. <laughs> hey, Chris, you got a Tim Lane is used to it. <laughs> I'm conditioned. <laughs> Ni hao. Ni hao. Ni hao. Okay, now we feel it all. Okay, here we go. <laughs> well, this has been a long and crazy journey. Getting here to New York. We started in Macau, China, uh, Shanghai, uh, San Francisco, Las Vegas, Los Angeles, and now we're here in the Big Apple. And it's a pleasure to be here uh, because uh, New York uh, and this part of the country uh, have always followed the sport of boxing. I've always backed Manny Pacquiao, and now they have one of their own to cheer for in Chris Algieri. So it's really great to be here, and I want to thank you all for coming. This fight on November 22nd uh, will be held in the beautiful Kotai Arena at the Venetian Macau. Now, the Venetian Macau is owned by Sands China. It is uh, a company that has dedicated itself to bring great attractions to Macau, whether it's boxing, such as what well, we'll see on November 22nd, or great entertainment, or cultural uh, events, like the bringing over the Philadelphia Symphony Orchestra. They've done such a wonderful job uh, making Macau a destination uh, for people uh, all over Asia, all over the world to go to. And the reason that they've been so successful it is largely because of the CEO of Sands China, the man who runs the Venetian Macau. Uh, he is a great uh, fan of the sport of boxing. He has made this all possible, and he's done such a wonderful uh, job in bringing to the attention of the world uh, the events uh, that take place in Macau. So please welcome the CEO of Sands China, Ed Tracy. Thanks, Bob. Neiman Hao, bienvenidos. Uh, as Bob mentioned, uh, it's been quite a journey. We're not talking just about this press tour. We started in earnest about 14 months ago to bring big time boxing uh, to Macau as part of an overall marketing strategy to raise the visibility of Macau as a as a destination for leisure. Uh, one of the ways we've done that is to engage in a lot of athletics, uh, whether it's the NBA, big time boxing, uh, UFC, Muay Thai, tennis, golf, and the right in Macau Open, to concerts such as Rihanna and the Rolling Stones last year. We reached an audience with our broadcast from Macau about 920 million uh, in 2013, which is an impossible number in the United States for the, those of you in the media houses. But again, the objective is to create excitement around the name Macau, and then obviously to sell our brand, uh, the Venetian and all of our other hotels. How, how do you do that in today's market and do it with the rapidity with the way we have performed in the last 14 months? And the answer is always, you partner with the best in the business, and, and that's what we've done. Our broadcast partners, both in China uh, in the United States, with HBO, who is just a terrific, the best, the best of the best uh, in boxing, in my opinion. Um, doing great work with uh, the Foreman Boys, um, our partners in China, Seika, 
um, all of Oxy promoters, uh, helping us create this venue for new and young talent. Working with Top Rank, uh, for me, is like uh, a page out of a playbook from 25 years ago when I was running Donald Trump's company. And we featured all the big heavyweight fights and middleweight fights of that period in Atlantic City. And of course, Bob is the best teacher in the business. He's the best promoter. His staff is the best around. It's been a great partnership working with them. And now we have some new partners. Obviously, the chance to work with Manny is a great honor. His team, Freddie Roach, Hall of Fame trainer. And new young talent, specifically from China, Zhao Shei Min, a national hero who's won three medals, the only medal winner in the Olympics ever to come from China. And just as important to us, some young talent from Hong Kong, which is our neighbor. Uh, Rexo is undefeated, and in particular, a, a fighter from Macau who Bob gave a break, let him go on the first card, and he's now undefeated. Uh, we call him the Macau Kid, KK and N. Uh, have, having Manny on a card for the second time, uh, we're extraordinarily proud, and we're also extraordinarily proud of our new relationship with new family members, uh, Chris and Joe. Um, just a tremendous opportunity uh, for this young guy, and that makes us feel like what we're doing has meaning beyond just the commercial aspects of boxing. Uh, we would never be able to do any of this uh, without Bob and his team, but also the support of the, uh, the sports press in particular. So we want to thank you for your support. We encourage you to come. You cannot believe what's going on in Macau until you see it. And there's a very, very good package for you to fly, stay, and take great care of the press when they come to visit us. And I challenge you, get off your ass, get on a plane, come and see what's going on in the cow. If Chris, if Chris is still, that's ASS. <laughs> and if young Chris here has the balls to get in the ring with Manny Pacquiao, you should come to Macau. Thank you very much for your He's support. got the balls to get in the ring with you. Thank you, man. In our operations in China, which has now been extensive, in addition to the uh, events we've done in Macau, uh, last week we did our first event, first professional boxing event uh, in the mainland of China, in Shanghai, which was a huge success uh, ratings-wise, and we did that with the support and the aid of Venetian Macau, uh, and that uh, worked wonders. You cannot believe how the sport of boxing is growing uh, in China uh, for all of its billion, 400 million people. I mean, it's one of the most amazing things. The first time we did an event in, China, in Macau, uh, you could hear a pin drop. They didn't know that they could cheer or anything. You should have heard them Tuesday night uh, in Shanghai. They were as loud as any crowd uh, in Madison Square Garden for a Kodo fight. Uh, so uh, boxing is really catching on in China, and we've been aided in that endeavor uh, by our partners, uh, uh, who uh, are the sons of the great two-time heavyweight champion George Foreman, Foreman Boys Promotions, and George Jr., George Foreman Jr., is right here. And we're, again, thrilled that this fight will be distributed on HBO pay-per-view. This is the 18th, 18th event that Manny Pacquiao has participated in that has been distributed by HBO pay-per-view. 18th event. And over the 17 events that have taken place, Manny has done over 13 million pay-per-view buys on HBO pay-per-view. That's truly a great accomplishment. And we're grateful for the cooperation, the help, the work, 
of HBO Pay Per View. And we have with us today the director of HBO Pay Per View. Please welcome Tammy Ross. Thank you, Bob. Good morning to you all. What an incredible turnout. Shows the, the power of Manny and the power of Chris. I'm pleased to represent HBO and HBO Pay Per View to join these accomplished fighters and these representatives at the finale press conference of a spectacular and wildly successful press tour. Chris Algieri earned his place on this day as, as every past Pacquiao opponent has, through intelligence, strength, and sheer will. When most counted him out against Ruslan Provodnikov, Algieri dug deep, as he has 19 times in the past, found the strength and will to win. He has never tasted defeat, and he isn't prepared to start. Manny Pacquiao, by contrast, is very familiar with his place on the dais, and has been all too happy to leave defeat in his rear view mirror. When many prophesized that he was at the end of his career, his victories over Rios and Bradley reminded us that you can never count out a true champion. Both of these men represent what the sport is about. Find a way to pick yourself up, when you're down, and when. We look forward to announcing a full slate of original programming that will air on HBO and all HBO digital platforms, spotlighting the challenging weeks ahead for both Pacquiao and Algeria, and as they prepare to put everything on the line. You know, Mr. Tracy said it very well, Macau is an incredible place from first-hand experience. It is unlike anything else you could ever experience. The live event will be produced by HBO and distributed by HBO Paper View live on November 22nd throughout the United States. Thank you, and we look forward to a tremendous event. Thank you, Tammy. And we also want to acknowledge the help that we received from our sponsor, Takati. Takati has backed our programs for years, and they are really stepping up uh, their support uh, for the Pacquiao Algeri event. What they're doing is they're running a sweepstake. Uh, a lucky fan will get to travel on a VI trip, trip to Macau to watch the fight live. Additionally, winners of the sweepstakes will get transportation and rooms at the fabulous Venetian Hotel in Las Vegas so they can watch uh, the uh, fight and the whole event uh, in a private ballroom uh, in Las Vegas. In addition, uh, Takani uh, is giving a $30 rebate uh, to be eligible for, uh, from the pay-per-view. To be eligible for the rebate, you have to buy an 18-pack or larger of Takati or Takati Light, and there'll be a coupon, and you can use that to reduce the cost of the pay-per-view for this fight by $30. Where do I get it? There'll be <laughs> thousands of displays, in supermarkets, in liquor stores, all over uh, by Takati, uh, carrying the word uh, for this card on, on November 22nd. We are very fortunate to have a sponsor like Takati, who supports boxing and particularly supports an event like Pacquiao Algeri, the way Takati is doing. So thank you very much uh, for your help. I want to talk a little bit about the pay-per-view undercard before we uh, get into what uh, we've come uh, to meet the fighters and to hear from their camps. This undercard will be special. It will be special because it will be international. Boxing is becoming more and more an international sport. It doesn't belong to one country or one region. In the principal undercard match, Ed alluded 
to Zhao Shiming. He's been the poster boy for boxing in China, winning gold medals in the Beijing and London Olympics. He has been a professional for five fights, all of which under the tutelage of Freddie Roach, who's won. He now fights a WBO eliminator against an undefeated Thai fighter, and that should be a sensational fight. It will be over 12 rounds. He's never gone 12 rounds, but Freddie is confident that he'll come through. In another international match on the program, the man generally conceded to be the greatest amateur boxer in the history of the sport, Vasil Lomachenko from the Ukraine, whose record as an amateur was 400 wins and one defeat, uh, who won gold medals in Beijing and London, and in his third professional fight, won the featherweight championship of the world, beating Gary Russell. Vasil Lomachenko will be defending his title against a Thai, another Thai fighter, with a record of 52 wins and one defeat, who hasn't lost a, a fight in eight years. The last fight that he lost was a close decision to the legendary champion, former champion Chris John. Uh, that should be a tremendous fight. And finally, a little closer to home, Jesse Vargas, the WBA uh, junior welterweight champion uh, who resides in Las Vegas, will defend his title against former lightweight champion from Mexico, Antonio DeMarco. That's a really powerful undercard, so it should be a great, great uh, night of boxing. Uh, you have a party, watch the pay-per-view, and you're going to see a lot of action. Plus, you're going to see an event taking place all the way across the world uh, from China. And it's very, very interesting how the event is put on in China, uh, how different it can be from the United States, and how similar. Uh, that's all very interesting because it's a standard now made by the Venetian uh, in Macau. Uh, if a fight ends early, nothing to worry about. They put in 12 dancing girls in the ring, and you can see uh, a, a, a lot of action and a lot of activity and beautiful women from all over the world. So it's something special watching uh, a telecast uh, that comes uh, from the Venetian Macau. This match between Chris Algieri, the junior welterweight champion of the WBO, and Manny Pacquiao, the welterweight champion, is something special. Let's face it, Chris Algieri isn't and hasn't been a household name in boxing. First question the writers asked me upstairs, is he deserving of this fight? And I say to them, he's deserving because he earned it. He came from obscurity, he won fights as an underdog on ESPN, and finally on HBO, coming in as a heavy underdog, he fought the man that nobody wants to fight, Ruslan Provodnikov, the heavy-handed uh, Russian from Siberia, who is the champion, got knocked down twice in the first round, his eye closed, got up, found a way to fight this beast, and ended up outboxing him, winning the fight, winning the championship, and winning a ticket to Macau to fight uh, the great Manny Pacquiao. I'd like to call to the microphone the man that helped Chris make it all possible, his promoter. Please welcome Joe DeGuardi. Thank you, Bob. I don't know. It's uh, 
certainly great to be back in New York. We started this journey two weeks ago, 27,000 miles ago, multiple cities, Macau, Shanghai, San Francisco, Las Vegas, Los Angeles. It's been a great trip. Beautiful women coming out in throngs every trip. <laughs> Shanghai, Macau, Los Angeles, most beautiful women in the world in all those cities. Um, surrounding and swarming all over Chris, it's been something else. But we're here in the most beautiful city in the world, New York, and you saw we got the best girls also. Um, I want to thank, and I'm, you know, like, like I said, when I started this journey, I said on the Davis dais in um, Macau, it was an honor and privilege to be on this dais. Some of the most legendary people in the sport, legendary places in the sport. Bob Aaron, a man who's promoted every major fight, every major fighter in the sport, from Muhammad Ali, George Foreman, on down, you name him, Bob has promoted him to being on the stage with a man like Ed Tracy, who at the Venetian Macau has the largest casino in the world, fantastic place, and I know everybody's mentioned it, but press, media, come out there. It's a, certainly a special package that's been presented, it includes all the food, the hotel. It, it's, a, it's a sight and experience you don't want to miss. There's nothing like it. And uh, also Ed has been responsible for building up boxing now in China, which is great for our sport. Also, being on the stage with Freddie Roach, a legendary trainer, Manny Pacquiao, legendary fighter, has so many titles, you can't even count them. And I'm also blessed and honored to be on the stage with Chris Algieri, who like Manny Pacquiao, the both of them, are great ambassadors for the sport. On one hand, you have a great fighter, Manny Pacquiao, a congressman. On the other hand, a great fighter, Chris Algieri, who has got a degree from Stony Brook, a master's degree, um, put his medical school studies on hold. These are real ambassadors for boxing and great for the sport and industry. And also, while I'm talking about who's on his dais, I want to introduce first um, some members of my team. And before I get to the actual Chris Algieri team, I want to introduce Audi Palulo from Banner Promotions. As you know, Chris Algieri is here because he beat the most feared fighter in the industry, Bruce Lombardikov. He beat the fighter that nobody wanted to fight. And that was Audi's fighter. And as a result, Audi's involved in this fight with Chris Algieri, as well as uh, another one afterwards, or actually two after. Um, and uh, he's a good friend of mine. I'm going to ask him to come up and say a couple words. Audi Palula, Mount of Portions. Good morning, everybody. Um, first, I'd like to thank Bob. And I'd like to thank Manny Pacquiao and Ed Tracy from the Sands. It's great stuff. It really is great stuff. I mean, he's a tremendous host. He's the Sands people, the Venetian. They were terrific to us. And I've said this the whole trip. If it wasn't for Bob and this young fellow, Manny Pacquiao, who was one of the great fighters of his time, giving Chris the opportunity, you know, nobody would be up there. So thanks again, and Freddie, good seeing you as always. When we made the fight with Lou Salon and Chris Algieri, I did not know Chris Algieri. And, uh, but I know Joe DeGuardi. We've been with friends for years, co-promote Demetrius Andre. I know his pop, his father very well. It's been my pleasure to be friends with their family. So we go out and we make this fight. And I gotta tell you, Chris Algieri is living what we would call the American dream. You know, he's a kid that nobody knew. He fought on ESPN on February 14th. He wasn't supposed to win that fight. 
against Emmanuel Taylor. Then, when the opportunity came up for him to fight Ruslan Provodnikov, you know, he is a huge underdog. And what Chris Algieri did, and I've been saying it the whole time, is that he, in boxing, you must win a fight you're not supposed to win. In order to become a star, a player, to be in the business at the elite level, you must win a fight you're not supposed to win. And I knew Paranakov was in trouble in the first round, and I've been saying it the whole time. He was a smart kid. He gets hurt, he goes down, gets up, he's in the first round, a lot of things are going on. Things are happening quickly, you have to make fast decisions on what you're going to do. So what does he do when he's being barraged? He takes a knee. He gathers himself. He already lost the round 10-8. He takes a knee, gets himself collected, loses the round 10-7, and then goes on and wins the fight. And I knew then that this is a very talented, smart kid. And I've had a good pleasure to meet him and to meet his dad and become friends with them. It's going to be a great fight, ladies and gentlemen. You got the right guy up here because he does deserve to be here. And he has done things that you're supposed to do when you want to be a player. He won the fight he wasn't supposed to win. Thanks for having me. And I, I apologize. I forgot one of the other group is HBO. Thank Kenny Hirschman, Mark Taffet, all the guys at HBO for, for actually embracing Chris Algieri to be the opponent for this fight. Thank you very much. Fifteen years ago, approximately, Chris Algieri walked into a gym. He was a young man, young, actually a teenager, and he walked into the gym of a world champion kickboxer. That world champion kickboxer sparred with Chris Algieri that first day. And unlike everybody else that he had started with, which lasted maybe a round or two out here in Long Island, it was very hard to find sparring for him. Chris Algieri lasted six rounds, or seven rounds of sparring straight through for as long as they wanted to go. Chris took a beat. He got kicked all over the place. Right? He was a young kid fighting a kickboxing world champion. But he stayed there, fought with him. And over the course of the next few days sparring, actually Tim Lane was shocked that Chris came back to the gym the next day. But when he came back, worked at it, and turned the tables, and started to do a job on Tim Lane. And Tim realized he had a real fighter. He had a real winner. Fast forward now, Tim Lane, is the trainer of Chris Algeria's boxing career, along with Keith Trimble. Another man who's been there for all those years was Keith, was Tim's trainer back when. Quiet assassin. Throughout the course, and I'm going to introduce Keith right now, Keith Trimble, because he's not going to get up and say a couple words, but this is Keith Trimble. He's a Long Island old yeah, yeah, the New York Coach So, those 15 years of working together with Tim Lane, and that is his trainer, but Tim Lane has also become a guru here on this press tour. You know, I had the pleasure of knowing Tim for the whole time I've been promoting Chris. And you get together, you know guys that are part of your team, but there's nothing like spending two weeks together every second of the day. Literally, this is a 24-hour tour. There's very, very little rest. You, know, you got to hand it to the fighters. Uh, Chris Algieri's been training the whole time while he's going out there. I don't know how he's doing it, which frankly, we're literally in interviews, meetings, press conferences, nonstop. But during the course of this tour, something else emerged. And it's Take it off like wildfire. And that is the guru, Tim Lane, who all of a sudden now uh, has been speaking about these power bracelets that Tim uses and wears. 
and they know it very well. Believe it or not, it's been spreading throughout the teams, throughout uh, people on this press tour, throughout the world. People have been looking for this stuff. They're all trying to get a hold of what it is that magnetism that makes Chris Algeria a winner, which I'll speak more about later. But I want to introduce to you now the trainer of Chris Algeri. Um, you know, he's actually got me believing in this power bracelet. He gave me. I'm actually wearing it. Nobody believes I'm wearing it in New York. I'm wearing it in New York. It's great, Joe. We introduce now the trainer of Chris Algeri, Timmer. Back to you, Chris. You got one, too? <laughs> Hello, New York. And welcome to the Chris Algeri Show. It's, uh, it's been an amazing trip uh, going around the world, and uh, Mr. Bob Aram has, uh, has, has shown us um, that he is a very gracious man. Uh, I got to eat lobster and crab on his G5 going to uh, L.A., uh, so life has been wonderful. Uh, I'd like to thank Ed Tracy, Joe DeGuardia, Artie Palula for putting this together. Uh, uh, Freddie Roach and, and, and Team Pacquiao, they're, um, they're just amazing. They're, they're really good people. Um, they, they treated us so nice. and. Uh, thank you so much. I'm just so humbled and blessed to be here. Uh, and, you know, Joe's been talking about me the whole trip and been speaking very well and been saying how much of a guru I am. Um, I'm just trying to live right and help Chris along his way and, and you know, be a better person. But this never would have happened if, uh, if Keith Trimble wouldn't have had my back a long time ago as my coach. Um, he has, I live in Las Vegas now. Chris trains out here. He trains with Keith. Uh, and Dr. Mike Camp and Tony Ritchie. If, uh, if it wasn't for those guys holding, you know, holding this whole thing together, uh, life would have been very hard for Chris and I because Las Vegas is, um, is very difficult to live out there. And uh, without Keith, uh, you know, you, you uh, love you, brother. You, um, you helped us a lot, man. Uh, and also, you know, Chris has, uh, Chris has taught me a lot about life. We've, uh, we spent a lot of time teaching him about fighting, but uh, Chris Algieri knows how to live. Um, Outside the ring, you never know he's a fighter because he enjoys the finer things of life. Uh, you might see him at Starbucks with his leg crossed sipping on a latte um, if he's not in the gym. Uh, but those of you who do know him know when he's in the gym, uh, he trains hard, he puts his soul on the line, and come November 22nd, it's going to be quiet time. And all you're going to hear in the background come from New York, coming from all the houses that people know Algeria, is you're going to hear. Algeria, 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 Algeria. We coming, baby. November 22nd, we bringing that belt back to New York. This is the time for me to remind Joe DeGuardi that any product mentioned or pushed for sale in this promotion a piece of the revenue goes to Manny and myself. <laughs> That's the way it works. <laughs> well, guys, it's now time for me to introduce the Pacquiao team. Uh, we've traveled all over the world and uh, this has been going for many years, so we're all great friends. We know everybody's comedy lines, everybody's jokes, uh, but we still uh, continue because there's a lot of camaraderie uh, among us. I'd like to introduce uh, Manny's advisor, Michael Kahn. And it's really a pleasure to bring to the microphone a man who really needs no introduction. A Hall of Fame trainer who is continuing to train the best fighters in the sport, like Manny, Miguel Cotto, Zhao Shiming, on and on. Uh, nobody does it like Freddy. Uh, he is the best. Please welcome Freddie Roach.
Thank you, Bob. Uh, it's been a great tour. Um, a lot of miles. Uh, flying coast to coast is very tough. Uh, it's, been, it's been a lot of fun. Getting to meet Chris and his team. Um, very, very good, good guys. And uh, I wish you the best of luck. And uh, we start training camp in the Philippines next week. We're going to get a lot of work ahead of us. I can't wait to get started. Thank you. Look, I asked you, isn't this refreshing? Here you have two camps, two fighters going to fight each other on November 22nd, who will prepare like hell and give it all in the ring. And yet, when they appear in public, there's not only no trash talking, there's only compliments for each other. And that's how sports should be. That, by and large, is how the NFL is. And that's why it's so successful. And that's why I'm so proud of both of these camps for the way they behave and truly feel, because it's a credit to the sport. This is a noble sport, boxing is. We don't need trash talking. We don't need cursing. We just need the participants to show the proper respect for each other, which they've done. So now let me call to the microphone to introduce the junior welterweight champion, Chris Algieri, my friend Joe DeGarda. Well, a bunch of years ago, a young man came into my office and we signed an agreement for us to promote him. I signed him because I was very impressed with the man that he was outside the ring. I was impressed with the fact that he had a Bachelor of Science degree from Stony Brook University in healthcare science management. I was impressed with the fact that he had a master's degree in clinical nutrition. And I was actually impressed with his confidence and determination that he expressed to me when we had met. We found a venue in his hometown in Huntington, the Paramount. A beautiful little place, fun place, and went there and did a show. Chris was on the show, and the show sold out. I was impressed. I was impressed by the venue, I was impressed by the way he fought, I was impressed by the way he carried himself. I was also impressed with the fact that, for the first time of being at a boxing match, the fans, there were more women than men. <laughs> you don't see that in boxing. And there was something about that, because Chris generated a new kind of fan. I believe that he's going to continue to generate a new kind of fan for the sport. I believe he's a perfect ambassador for the sport. All of those things were great. And then, every time after every fight, he'd keep telling me, I want you to get me better guys. I want you to get me the best competition. I want to fight the best. Well, we did that. And every time, he stepped up to the plate and won. Fast forward to this year. And this year, he fights Emmanuel Taylor, a man he was not supposed to beat. February 14th, Valentine's Day, a packed paramount. Okay? Yes, fellow women also. And Chris Algieri beats Emmanuel Keller via shutout. Every round. Emmanuel Taylor was being looked at. That fight was on ESPN nationally and internationally. That fight was being watched by HBO. Peter Nelson, other executives at HBO. The greatest network in boxing. 
and by the way, we're pleased that they're going to be a part of this promotion and force me on the promotion of the pay per view. But after the Emmanuel Taylor fight, when they were looking, they were looking at Emmanuel Taylor for to be an opponent for Ruslan Pavanikov. Chris upset those plans. Chris beat Emmanuel Taylor and put himself in line for a fight against Ruslan Pavanikov. Ruslan Pravodnikov, at the time, this year, was the most feared fighter in boxing. Brutalized fighters he fought, concussed the last two fighters that he had fought, and frankly, nobody wanted to fight him. Chris Algieri jumped at the opportunity. And on June 14th on HBO, Chris was knocked down twice in the first round. Got up with his eye completely closed, fought the entire fight, and thoroughly outboxed and outhustled and beat Ruslan Provodnikov. He did it because he's got technical skills, yes. He did it because he's smart, yes. He did it because he's got a great jab and he's fast hands, and he's in great, great shape, great endurance. But he also did it because he has the mental makeup of a winner. And whatever Chris has done, he's been a winner. In school, in boxing, in everything. That showed June 14th because he had the world to win. And now, on November 22nd, he's out again to show the world that he can do what people believe he cannot do. The way he did it to Emmanuel Taylor as a big underdog, the way he did it to Ruslan Provodnikov as an underdog, and now he's going to carry on his winning ways on November 22nd, show the determination, heart, and fire that he has, the things that make him a winner. WBO World Champion, Chris Algieri. What's up, baby? Good morning, New York. Feels, uh, feels good to be home on this, uh, this great tour. <coughs> first of all, I just want to thank a couple people. Um, first and foremost, uh, Bob, Bob Aram and Top Rank for, for making this fight happen, putting together this, this incredible tour. And um, you know, it's, it's, it's been a, a wild ride, a very entertaining one, and uh, a very fruitful ride, I believe. Also, uh, Mr. Ed Tracy, Tracy from the Venetian Macau. Uh, Macau is a, is a awesome city and uh, the Venetian is, is an incredible place. Um, I'd like to thank my promoter, Joe Guardia for uh, helping me you know, get to this position and to get this fight to um, you know, the, the, the whole Pacquiao squad who has been a, um, a real pleasure touring with and it's been great to watch uh, an elite team work because um, you know, make no mistake, we, these tours, we have fun, but th this is a work trip. You know, and, and uh, our job is to go out there and be ambassadors of the sport and to uh, promote the fight, promote the sport in general. And I believe that, um, you know, the Pacquiao team uh, does it better than anybody in the world. So it was, it was a real honor to, to, to watch them and, and to learn and to, uh, to take notes in the process. Also, I'd like to thank my team who's here today. Um, you know, Tim Lane, who's been traveling with me, and uh, Keith Trimble for, as Tim said, if it was not around, we would not be here today. Um, you know, Dr. Mike Camp, my friend coach, and um, as well as, as, as Tony Ricci, who um, has been uh, there all along. Uh, I'm going to keep this brief. I don't really have uh, that much to say. Everyone has said such incredible things. Um, you know, really, this is just going to be a great fight. You know, um, you guys should definitely, definitely tune in. And um, not even just tuning in on, on November 22nd. You should, you should, you know, tune in now. You know, the, um, the, the build-up to this fight is going to be incredible. You know, um, I invite everyone to, to watch my camp and, and see the way that, um, you know, a champion approaches a, a fight of this magnitude. And uh, it's going to be a, a fun and interesting ride. And I think um, I'm excited for you guys to, to, to see what goes into this and, and what goes into, um, you know, what a, what, a, what a champion does 
and uh, just the lifestyle involved. Also, I'd like to, one last thanks, I want to thank everybody here. You know, you guys are packing in here like a sardine can, and uh, it's, it's very much appreciated. But um, it's been a wonderful tour. Um, although, you know, it, it, it's been a lot of fun. It's, it's happy, I'm happy to see it close, and I'm looking forward to beginning training camp. Um, I wish the Pacquiao team all the luck in, in during training, and um, I will see you all, you know, on, on fight week. Thank you. I've been doing this for almost 50 years, and it's a long time, and I have never ever been involved with a fighter where an entire country is concerned about his welfare, about whether he wins or loses, about how he performs, about how he conducts himself. The Filipino people, whether they live, the 90 million that live in the Philippines, or the millions of others that live around the world, including this country, where many of them are citizens, are invested in Manny Pacquiao. They believe in Manny Pacquiao, they follow Manny Pacquiao. Uh, every move that he makes is fodder uh, for their feelings. He's discussed in every Philippine household. He's part of what makes that country and those people great. And that, to me, is a responsibility that will be hard for an ordinary person to carry. But Manny Pacquiao seems to be able to carry that burden and to have the rapport with his people. And whatever happens in the ring, whatever happens outside the ring, he will do his best to make them proud. Proud that they're Filipinos, proud that in Manny Pacquiao he is somebody that's admired all over the world. And he is. Everybody comments, is he distracted by the various things that he does? Uh, the politics. He's a two-time congressman representing the province, the district of Sarangana. Uh, he has a great promising career, even bigger things in the Philippines. He is known around the world as a great humanitarian. Uh, the things that he has done to help his people from his own resources without asking help from the government, without raising funds from other people, with his own resources, whether it's to buy outboard motors for a fishing fleet so that the fishermen can get out to where the fish are quicker and therefore make a better living. Manny is there, whether it's scholarships, whether it's uh, hospital beds, Manny is there. Some people say that the social welfare system in the Philippines is named Manny Pacquiao. And to a large extent, that's true. So this has been wonderful, not only to see this happen, but to know that we who are associated in the sport of boxing have such a wonderful representative at the top of the game, somebody that we in boxing can without question be proud of. And that's more than left hooks and right crosses and defensive styles or whatever. This is character. And to have somebody 
like Manny Pacquiao, in this sport enhances the sport. So we're grateful to you, Manny, for being part of our lives, for being part of the sport of boxing, for conducting yourself so well within and out of the ring. Please welcome the congressman from Sarangani, the welterweight champion of the world, Manny Pac-Man Pac Thank you. Good morning, everyone. First, I'd like to thank God for giving us a great day that's before us. And of course, um, I would like to thank the uh, people um, who helped me to be here in my position. Um, first, HBO. Because of HBO, uh, people uh, recognize me and know me here in America. Not only in America, but all over the world. And of course, the promoter, Bob Aron. Bob, thank you. Uh, all everything that you helped me. That you, um, you know, are taking care of me every time that I have a fight. And also, I would like to thank the press and media and the fans for always uh, behind us, supporting. Uh, because of you, we're here. So, um, all the achievements that I have in my boxing career, in my life, you are a part of it. You know? Um, that's why. I cannot, I cannot uh, boss myself alone because I'm not doing it alone. I'm doing it with you guys. And uh, this coming fight on November 22nd in, in Macau, I hope you, um, you support this fight 100%. It's going to be a good fight and I would like to thank the people behind this why the fight happened in Macau, uh, 8th receipt. And uh, uh, the Nation Hotel for their support. Uh, the fight it happened uh, in in Macau, so that uh, uh, the Asian uh, the Asian people can have a chance to watch live of my fight, especially to promote boxing in Macau, China. So uh, thank you, to all of you. This will be a good fight. Don't miss this fight. Um, I know I respect. Um, the team Algeria, um, they are a good uh, guy, one of the uh, nice uh, person that I, I, I met um, when I in box, when I in uh, boxing and the his team. And of course the team Pacquiao, uh, especially uh, Michael Cons, I will call him uh, Mr. B. <laughs> Mr. B. I thought And uh, of course, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you so much to all the Filipino people. Maraming maraming salamat po sa lahat ng mga Filipino all over the world na laging nagkadasal at sumusuporta sa akin. I'm sorry, I'm talking in, in, in Tagalog. But uh, sa lahat ng mga Pilipino, marami pong salamat sa inyong lahat. Uh, ako po ay itaos po sa nagpapasalamat sa inyong lahat sa walang sampung support. And to all the fans all over the world, thank you so much for all your uh, support and love for boxing. And uh, because of you, we're here still fighting, keep on fighting. And the journey of Manny Pacquiao will continue. Thank you so much. And, uh, Ha, ha, ha. 